Hello, good afternoon, Tribuners. Welcome back with me, Mutiara, in Indonesian News of Tribun Lampung. We will present you an updating and interesting information from every place in Indonesia. And here are the complete news. The first news is Ridwan Kamil and Anis Baswedan join Citayam Fashion Week. The Citayam Fashion Week favor did not only attract teenagers but a number of celebrities and officials also show off and did not want to be outdone when they were at the venue. The existence of Chitayam Fashion Week in SCBD has become a magnet for teenagers and a number of these figures show their best action. In addition, Chitayam Fashion Week is a place to is a phenomenon of culture from Baverson known as SCBD, who are fun to hang out in the studio mat and while queerly styled, their presence is like a fashion show. In fact, recently the Duku Atas area has really become a catwalk area. Professional models, artists, and even officials are now arriving to appear at Chitayam Fashion Week. The celebrities and officials who participated in this Fashion Week's Chitayam were Paula Verhoeven, Ria Ricis, Dinar Kendi, two professional models, namely Valerie and Veronica, Ivan Gunawan, Yuni Sara, Ridwan Kamil, and Anis Baswedan. The governor of West Java, Ridwan Kamil, seems to have prepared well before walking on the catwalk of Chitayam Fashion Week, Duku Atas Area, Sudirman, Central Jakarta, on Wednesday, July 22, 2022. Because the outfit he was wearing was the work of famous designer Samuel Wongso from Wong Han, Thailand. Ridwan Kamil wore a mocha brown suit, not only that. He wore sunglasses and a fedora hat. What made his appearance even cooler? Ridwan Kamil walked to the Chitayam Fashion Week catwalk with a leather backpack. DKI Jakarta Governor Anis Baswedan showed the Duku Atas area, Central Jakarta, to four officials from European Union Financial Institution on Tuesday, 19 July 2022. Anis even had time to post on the catwalk crossing the Taman Duku Atas Street, which later became the point of the Chitayam Fashion Week. The next news comes from Banten. The appearance of a crocodile in the Chinanka River. A crocodile is seen under a bridge over the Chidana River, Chinanka District, Serang Regency, on Wednesday, July 22, 2022. The crocodile was recorded by residents who wanted to fish around the Muara Teneng, Chinanka. Rifki Sofian, a resident, admitted that the appearance of crocodiles is not a strange thing. According to him, residents often see crocodiles and record them. He suspected that the crocodile's habitat was around the Chidana River. However, there has never been a loss of life due to crocodile attack around the Chidana River. Some time ago, the appearance of crocodiles choked residents and tourists in the Anyar Beach area. At the time, two crocodiles appeared in coastal water in Chinanka district. The crocodile also comes from the Chidana River, which flows downstream on the Chinanka coast. The next news is. Brigadier Jess Badi will be re autopsied The Indonesian National Police immediately carry out an exhumation or re autopsy of the body of Brigadier Nofriansa Yosua Hutabarat, alias Brigadier G, at the request of the family. 
This was immediately carried out to anticipate the decomposition process of brick energy. Later, the re-autopsy will be carried out by involving external parties such as the National Human Rights Commission, the National Police Commission, and the Indonesian Forensic Medicine Association. Previously, the legal team of Brigadier Yosua Huta Barat, alias Brigadier G, filled an exhumation regarding his client's re-autopsy. The request for exhumation was submitted to the head of the Indonesian National Police, General Listio Sigit Prabowo. In, Indo in addition to Sigit, the letter or request for exhumation was also forwarded to Deputy Chief Police of Republic Indonesia, Commissioner General Gatot Edi, Inspector General Supervision of the Republic Indonesia Police, Commissioner General Adi Marioto, Head of Criminal Investigation Agency, Commissioner General Agus Andrianto, to the Republic Indonesia Police Criminal Investigation Agency, Brigadier General Andirian Jayadi. Brigadier Jis Tone Kamarudin Simanjuntak asked the head of the Indonesian National Police to also form a special team to dismantle the grave of Brigadier G. Later, the team will also oversee the re-autopsy of Brigadier G. He said that the formation of the team was important because the family considered that Brigadier G's death was not due to shooting. On the other hand, it is suspected that his client was abused. Therefore, he said, his party asked the head of the Indonesian National Police to also order his voice to form the independent team. The team consists of various related parties. The next news comes from Bali. A student was found trapped in a ravine with a depth of 40 meters. 17 years old, Sema Rapura Secondary High School student Char is trapped at the bottom of a 40 meter deep ravine on Hasanuddin Street, Besang neighborhood, Samarapura, Kajal Village, Kungkung, Bali. When he was about to be rescued by the Bali National Search and Rescue Agency team, the 12th grader from Papua rebelled. He looked like a depressed person. The evacuation process must also involve the student's foster teacher. The incident began when the Klungkung Regional Disaster Management Agency received information that someone was calling for help from the bottom of a ravine in the Besang neighborhood on Wednesday, July 22, 2022. Dozens of personnel from the Klungkung Regional Disaster Management Agency searched the edge of the cliff at around 2 o'clock p.m. to find the source of the sun. After finding out his whereabouts, the Klungkung Regional Disaster Management Agency team requested assistance from the Bali National Search and Rescue Agency because of the difficult terrain. Moreover, the bottom of the abyss was within 40 meters. The Bali National Search and Rescue Agency team arrived at location at around 3 o'clock p.m. After observation, the team immediately carried out an evacuation effort by lowering the personnel to the bottom of the raven. It is just that when he was at the bottom of the abyss, the student rebelled and did not want to be evacuated. The evacuation was decided by involving the student's foster teacher. The foster teacher, Gede Wiriana, immediately descended into the ravine accompanied by officers from the National Search and Rescue Agency. At the persuasion of his foster teacher, Char is willing to be evacuated by being pulled over a raven. After being successfully evacuated, Char looked dazzled and confused. The next news is, a student suspected being a victim of immorality by a lecturer gets legal protection. 
20 years old RM, a student at Halu Oleo University, Gandari who is suspected of being a victim of harassment by unscrupulous lecturers will receive assistance. The student was allegedly harassed by the professor of the UHO Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, the initial of Prof. B. Physiological and legal assistance will be provided by the Technical Implementation Unit for the Protection of Women and Child in Kendari City and the Technical Implementation Unit for the Regional Women and Children Protection in Saudis, Sulawesi. The offer of assistance was conveyed by the team of the Regional Technical Implementation Unit for the protection of women and children in the city and province as well as the Saudi Sulawesi Women and Children Task Force when they visited the victim's residence in Kendari District on Thursday, July 21, 2022. According to Joyce Mann, his party will provide psychological assistance to victims. UPTD PPA also offers legal assistance to female student victims who are suspected of being harassed by the lecturer. Specifically for legal assistance, he said, the assistance had actually been carried out since the process of taking the victim's information from the police. He also explained that for psychological assistance, a meeting scheduled with a victim would be met. The next news is, Roy Suryo asks for protection for the cast that dragged his stem. Telematics expert Roy Suryo will visit the Witness and Victim Protection Agency on Thursday, July 21, 2022. He came to the Witness and Victim Protection Agency to ask for protection in the case of posting a meme about the Borobudur Tampo Stupa, which was legally a dishonorable act against a religion. The case is currently still under investigation at the Metro Jaya Regional Police. The same thing was said by Roy's attorney, Petra Romadoni. Through the coverage invitation sent by Petra, Roy Suryo is planning to visit the LPSK office on Bogor Highway, Chirachas, East Jakarta on Thursday, July 21, 2022. Petra only confirmed the request for the protection of witnesses and victims submitted by Roy Suryo. Previously, Roy Suryo was questioned again at the Metro Jaya Regional Police on Thursday, July 14, 2022. He was questioned for 11 hours and questioned by 38 questions by investigators from the Special Criminal Investigation Directorate of the Metro Jaya Regional Police. Roy reiterated that he was ready to assist the police in assisting the legal process that has nerved him. He also reiterated that his tweet on the 8KRMT Roy Suryo 2 account was nothing more than criticism. On that occasion, Roy also emphasized that his status was still the same as before. He still bears the status of witness even though this time the examination was carried out on the reporting of representatives of Buddhists. The last news is, 10 people named as suspect in illegal gold mining. The North Kalimantan Regional Police have arrested 10 people in an illegal gold mining case in Sekatak Bulungan. The Directorate of Special Investigation and Crime for the North Kalimantan Police, Police Grand Commissioner Handy F. Kurniawan said that the 10 people who were arrested had their respective rules. According to Hadi, the perpetrators carry out illegal gold mining by first taking soil and rock materials without a permit in the oil palm plantation area. By using two Mitsubishi 3 pickups, 
the material is then transported to the gold processing and refining location. Handy explained it that his party will continue to take action against illegal mining activities in Sekatak Bulungan. He admitted that he had not been able to completely shut down all mining activities in Sekatak Bulungan because to take action, sufficient evidence was needed for investigation purposes. Also secured by the police, a number of evidences included 132 sacks of materials to Mitsubishi Triton pickups as well as a number of gold processing and refining equipment. Well, I think the all the gist for today with me, Mutiara. Don't forget to follow us in YouTube Tribun Lampung video, Facebook Lampung, Instagram Tribun Lampung, and TikTok Tribun Lampung for further information. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.